two lines in your lane, but as soon as one of the lane lines drops out, if it's fuzzy, uh, all of these just get all screwed up. So, so that's the general performance of, of the model. Yeah, we kind of saw it when, when you come through an exit, uh, when one of the lines drops, it basically takes like three seconds to come back, and then once it drops, the other lines actually kind of start moving around. So the question is whether or not they move around the same amount every time, or if it's like unpredictable. We were trying to maybe see if it's possible to drive the car with these better than, I mean, I guess it's probably possible to drive it better than Honda Simpson, but probably not as good as Open Pilot. No, you can close, yeah. Based on that movement on the other lines, when one line drops, the other lines just become irrelevant. Yeah, so I mean, the, the general strategy here, um, I guess this is just general information about the banner, but you know, I, I kind of look at these messages, and the only thing I get are uh, just these raw blocks of bits. And um, my strategy is to find the areas where things are changing. And uh, you know, one of the simplest places is going from no data to some data. So if there's just a whole bunch of ambiguous main lines, like box models. When, when you have no data, there's some default bit values for these. And so oftentimes you can see those default bit values um, kind of outline um, where a signal should be. Um, and so I can kind of mark those and then move into an area where there is some data and then try to look at the nice plots that the data puts out and try to correlate to things that I, I think or maybe know over there. Um, or in this case, you see that uh, one of the things I want to look for is to have any mainline offset, you know, that would be zero or all number. So, um, you know, I expect to see, if I'm in the center of a lane, I expect to see something that kind of, you know, floats, um, you know, maintains a constant bias. That, that is how I suspect that it can be that can be zero. And you can do the same thing for other signals that you, you know, map out and you know, Yeah, so you can kind of see where it's dropping out and just going to zero. And that's when there's no line detected. So that there's big gaps in this data. So to try to drive it, literally, you can't, there's no picture coming from so that you're basically just blind. You know, there's nothing there. So we kind of decided that was possible. You can do a lot of this. One minute left. Okay. We got five minutes in the All presentation. Right. All right. So, so then the object tracking, this is the, the cool part here that we're trying to inject objects for stock car detection. Uh, so we found four objects. Basically, these 16 messages in Cabana are corresponding to four objects. Uh, I guess Matt found the first one. I just kind of noticed that they kind of repeat in a pattern. So there's four parts per object. And we, we're trying to still work on this, but so far we found that object distance, uh, what we think is a relative angle. There seems to be three relative angles, so we're thinking maybe it's a relative angle to three points on a car in 3D space. Like you can see three points in a three-dimensional object at any time if the fourth point is blocked. My car has to kind of So when we say object relative angle, it's basically from zero, like looking forward from the car is zero, and then relative angle is like this. Uh, so that's like the position in the frame where that object would be. So once we do a little bit more refining on this, we're thinking of trying to inject our own uh, object into the car and get it to stop sooner or stop the car. That's the goal. Cool. Cool. Nice. Whoop and holla from that job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's go next. So for those joining us, they get a pay to fall. Um, there's Bro. also a panda, but that's much less exciting. No shipping Mondays and Thursdays. If you use the discount code free panda, you won't get a free panda, but you can use it. Is it, am I on the Wi-Fi? Yeah, you are. Oh, sweet. Okay, five minutes for the presentation.
What? Are they complaining? Yeah, they're complaining. Oh, they want the tripod now? We you don't know, have I a tripod. Shake them around every time they ask. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be nice to people on the internet. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's just how it is. If he, uh, I didn't invent it. And, well, yeah, it's so rude that there's that mount right there and we're just holding this one and that one's beautifully oh, mounted, but whatever. Adapter, yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah, folks. Get Apple to include one with the iPhone It's 12. this one. Sorry, the iPhone 10 2. 10 2. This is a nice phone, George. The iPhone 11 Pro Max. I should really right? get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the battery life lasts seven days. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Not actually. Yeah, well, supposedly. If you don't use it. Yeah. If you use it, it's An only like three, but that's still pretty good. <laughs> I love my pebble. It's pebbles. true, actually. Oh, that's so terrible. It doesn't terrible. look that good, but you know what? You'll get the iPhone faster, so. <laughs> Honestly, guys, we're selling too many Kama 2s. Um, don't buy them. We're behind. No, George. Not, always buy always buy Kama 2s. No, no, like, no. You'll make our lives easier if you just don't buy them. If you wait. Yeah, you can buy one once we're in stock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is the you can't come strategy. Cartman used it to great effect. But that, also kind that's of also, yeah, it's yeah. also kind of shooting. We're also kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. <laughs> no, no feet shooting. No $1,500 comment That's right. So, my name is Vizier. I'm from, I came down here from Seattle. And, uh, I'm Dylan. This is, from, uh, Sacramento. Cool. And basically, the project we worked on was image segmentation specifically, and we kind of dabbled around the comma 10 k data set. And basically, we were able to run the NPDF image segmentation model, uh, train on a data set called Kitty. And we basically try to classify the images given inside of the Palm of K. It is that over here you can see, you know, how we have the spine the road, the cars, the trees, and whatever. And over here, as you can see, uh, we can actually like fairly, you know, accurately classify uh, existing uh, dash cam videos. And I think it's uh, better than the current comma uh, in the segmentation when it comes to a lot of different scenes. Um, and one of the other projects we wanted to do was to, you know, train on the comma K data set. But uh, we later kind of like noticed that the data set wasn't good enough. There was like a lot of missing labels with the current architecture. We merged a lot of the labels. And right now there's only five labels, and I think that's what Kama AI is also working on. Um, if we scroll down a little, uh, we decided to basically throw out all of the useless information. On the basically, the only important thing left is uh, empty, like not non drivable stuff. And it was just, there was like signs, uh, it separated the signs from the actual uh, traffic signals. And then there was like three different types of persons, like far away persons. So we just kind of merged those all into one. Um, Women persons, one legged persons, handicapped persons. Yeah, there was, there was like city person actually. Ooh! <laughs> Sort of sky, trees, foliage, there's like tons of different stuff. It was basically useless. Can you tell me the difference between a tree and foliage? Yeah, then you have to say that. <laughs> so basically, yeah. Um, but so we, we, there's only three, what is it, four five. classes? Five classes? Yeah, five classes. Yeah, it's in those car and then road. Um, Eagle car isn't really showing up here because we don't have a map for it. But I think uh, the actual mappings we were able to do was like three or four different maps. Yeah, there was even a class called first and question mark. Yet yeah, they don't have lanes. <laughs> Yeah. Alright, so we also created this cool. nice video for you guys. So we found this 24 minute video. We're not going to show the whole thing. <laughs> uh, of car crashes. So it's just to demonstrate how the image oh, segmentation works on you know, a diverse data set. We'll show it for that. There's no temporal reasoning in the actual oh. uh, the inference so, so you can do it kind of live. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of jumping around. Uh, but as a general trend, each individual frame, for the ones that make more sense, is uh, so like if there's, it seems like when there's more entropic um, scenes, it actually seems to do a lot better. I'm Ooh, guessing oh because the actual number of classes that it used, it used a lot of bandwidth for the training for the more complex scenes. So more basic ones and even overhead stuff like that, it's very bad in terms of um, segmentation. But I think the next video, oh yeah. Whoa. Oh, this one's a great This one is a Oh God. So you kind of see like a smooth. <gasps> And this makes more sense because this is all we really care about is a dash cam from this sort of angle, right? Yeah. Um, and then one like this, it's very easy. It, like every single car <gasps> where there is a car, there's always going to be a class. And I haven't found a uh, false, uh, false negative. Press um, almost got hit. Yeah, because they labeled the road as car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 we, and we made all of the, like the uh, Jupyter Notebooks and source code uh, open source available. 
So if you want to like process your own video, you know, feel free to get it on the repo and have an issue. I did want to comment on this I guess it's a decent one. There's quite a bit of um, differences. You can see up there there's a sign that's yellow, it's fairly well um, colored and stuff. Uh, and then on the side here, you can see all the useless classes basically. This specific video was uh, actually for using like the 24 different classes, but I have a feeling if we actually made, uh, if we converted the output um, to how we did in that other example, um, the, the color process is not Yeah, it's not you got a time on YouTube, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, right, right, yeah. It's like a comment right, so shine the light, so they know. Cool. cool! Thank you very much. Whoop and holler. Did you like it? Wow, wow. a little more. Okay. Right. Hey. Who's next? Uh, okay. Nice. Um, everyone here is also going to be asked to vote on which presentation you like the best and you can't yourself, so pay attention. Well, oh, they say their vote out loud. That's so intense. Yeah. Yikes. Wow. Um, I think I'm here to heckle. I think I'm here to heckle presentations. Yeah. Yeah. You should have to heckle. Oh, I got. I got to time it. It's like the voice. The voice. Yeah. Yeah. We should turn around and then turn. And yeah. Where's the chairs? Yeah. The chairs. We like that. The chair. <laughs> the button. Hi, uh, how's it going? My name's Eamon. Uh, I came down here from LA. Uh, I just got this ready. You can get one at Comma. Hey, nice. He got it free, free. but it's $69 for you, That's YouTube right. Live. Uh, so, uh, what I worked on in this hackathon was trying to uh, create something called a Ross Bridge. Uh, I, this, what basically this tool uh, is doing is it's interfacing with the Comma AI message, message interface. So, the way that Comma AI uh, or open pilot um, uh, transfers messages or, or handles message handling is through uh, MM, MMSQ, I believe. So it's a shared memory message interface uh, that's supposed to be really efficient, really fast. Now, uh, I'm a robotics engineer, so a lot of my career is spent working with ROS, which is similar to open pilot, but of course it can't be really used in real time applications because it has a really slow message interface. So it's really good for uh, prototyping. Uh, algorithms because of its very modular framework. So I worked on trying to create a bridge between the Comma AI interface and the ROS interface. Uh, so I was able to do so. Uh, I just want to show the um, example. So I was able to get the image stream into ROS and then uh, as a result be able to load up one of my ROS packages which takes in a single image and produces the depth map and the point cloud for that single image. So um, you can see, uh, this is the example Whoa. over here. So it should load up in a second. Okay, so uh, this is Arvis. It's a tool that's built into ROS that like these are the, when you, when you get messages into ROS, you have this plethora of, uh, of tools in the ecosystem. So right now you can see that this is the image streaming from, an, uh, from a log uh, from uh, Andrew's drive. Uh, and right mm -hmm. under that image, you, you actually see the neural network's predicted depth map. And uh, on the right, you see a 3D visualized view of the actual uh, of the actual uh, uh, depth map in, in 3D space. So you can see like some like the, like this truck is being picked <coughs> up, and as it goes, it goes it goes farther along the, the depth map. Uh, so that's what I worked on. Uh, it is quite slow. You can see there's quite a delay. Of course, you have uh, inferencing on the GPU, but there is a, a good amount of bottleneck with the actual bridge. That's because uh, I actually pick up the messages from ZMQ, uh, not directly from the shared memory message interface. So I think in the future, I'd like to work on, uh, and to advance this, is to go directly from that shared memory uh, interface directly to ROS. So this is the one 
I was only get, able to get the images into WASP. I've been working on getting to odometry uh, data as well. So that hasn't, I haven't been able to quite get that right. But once I'm able to do that, then you'll be able to visualize the odometry uh, over time uh, and use uh, analysis tools built into us. Nice. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Woo. With two minutes to spare. Who's next? What do you think, YouTube? Open and holler. There's a lot of open and holler. All right. All yeah. Right. Well, comma pencil's coming up now. Yeah. Oh, wow. What? That wasn't a oh, joke. Yeah. Comma pencil. The Apple pen? Pen. Very similar. Very similar. So Apple pencil. They make pencils, they too. They do, don't they? We're yeah. going to make pencils. We're competing with Apple. Yep. Hey, uh, I'm Vic. Uh, I'm from Berkeley. I'm a master's student at UCB. Uh, so in this hackathon, I tried a bunch of things. So basically, Cobb Pencils is a uh, semantic segmentation tool. Uh, so yesterday, I tried semantic segmentation uh, on Gambit, uh, training a unit, and then trying to make it predict on the comma, comma and create data set. Uh, it wasn't that great. There were a bunch of issues, so I needed more training time, more data set, everything. So I sort of had to abandon that. Uh, and then I started taking a look at uh, comma coloring, and I thought the best. Uh, edit the currently already annotated uh, images. Uh, so a couple of things to note. So comma coloring is, uh, it's pretty good, but it's based on, like it detects edges and then it does flood filling, uh, which may not be very ideal for, uh, if you already have annotated images and if you have uh, like, you know, grainy type of things, like for example, like something like this, I mean, it takes a lot of time to like, flood fill here. Uh, I can actually just take you through the demo, uh, which is here, it has a bunch of these features. So this is how you can like flood fill. Uh, for example, if I want to just brush here, so this is slightly old data, I have the new data which is there, I'll show you. This laptop doesn't have enough space. Uh, but it's like, so let's say I want to do this, and then like this is now tagged as sky. Uh, so like this I can just, uh, color, uh, uh, this is editing an already annotated image. Uh, or you can also do flood fill. Uh, so I mean, I'll just show you because of this. So if you have some region that you, that is like left out and then you want to like flood fill, you can just click and then figure out what region is uh, is the same and then it can just flood fill. Uh, and then you can just navigate like to a, so I had this one, Yeah, for example, something like this, right? So, uh, it's hard to see. So, I mean, these are all tools that I built as I was just working on this and I just had to, I just wanted to uh, add these features for better annotation. Uh, so, what you can do here is that, again, you can color this and then if you have some spots left, you can just like, click on the flood fill mode and then you can fill it. Uh, then you can go to a particular image that you want to do and you can do all of these things. Uh, but one of the reasons to do this was to leverage I think I spoke about yeah, all these things. Uh, one of the things that I want to that I was checking out was uh, uh, GitHub's image diff, which is like really cool. Uh, so what this allows us to do is I can show that here. So these are some uh, masks that I like that I like edited. Uh, so this is a mask that didn't exist. So you just see this. Uh, but if a mask was already there, then you actually see a diff. Uh, this is like, I don't know anything, this is GitHub. Uh, so you can see like a, like a cool diff of like, you know, so if people want to like, 
improve some segmentation and then we want to like share it and then they can like send a pull request and then on that pull request you will get like a test. That's pretty cool. Uh, so I mean, another ambitious but slightly risky thing was to commit and raise a pull request from UI, uh, which works on my Mac, but the hub, uh, the CLI is broken on Linux, so I couldn't get that working. Uh, but basically you can like uh, make your annotation, download, and then you can commit, and then it creates, like this is the thing that I created. So, here is like, if you have a doubt, you can also just go to this the image, which is like the actual image that you have. You got a minute. Yeah. So, so YouTube, pay attention because this stuff's all going to go live and you guys are going to label the 10K. This is actually the highest leverage way in a long time for you to actually improve OpenPilot. Our segment is total garbage and it underlies all the OpenPilot models. So if you're upset that OpenPilot doesn't detect the lanes by you, you're going to be spending a few hours in common pencil. Common uh, pencil. Sweet. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Woo! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Did everyone realize that I spelled limit wrong on every single sign? <laughs> No one, no one caught Whoa, that, huh? There's no eye. Limps oh, over there wow, too. Wow, just like driving, you can do it with one eye. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's one good eye. Okay. You got us. Viv. What about that one? There's no eye on that one. Yeah. You got, you got us, Viv. Wow, I, I really. Wow, I must have looked at that sign a lot of times. <laughs> on, limps. <laughs> on limps, on dashing, on transfer. I wish it was on purpose. On it purpose. On purpose. No, it's embarrassing. I was like, how did I miss you so many eyes? Wrong. So many you times. I legit didn't notice it. I legit I didn't. didn't I know, I'm yeah, concerned yeah. with myself. I don't know what happened. The M and the T is kind of Well, they seven. do, and you think you're doing an I because you do the movement of the M and the T. You know, it's all very, yeah. very in sync. I don't know. Landing with your hands is very hard. It is. Okay, technology. It's tough. Wow, I mean, these people are rude about the tripod. I'm gonna shake a little bit, you know. There we go. Yeah, shake them. Yeah. Yo, and get ready for comma pencil, guys. Yeah. Oh <laughs> 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 um, no, we actually really appreciate you if it's possible. Join us on Discord for the greatest comma crowdsourcer since like the last one of these we did. Mm -hmm. No, but like this one matters. The comma coloring data is old. This matters. This matters. It's a lot more well thought out. Ten thousand images. I believe in you guys. Comment pencil. And the reason I believe in you is your pull request is going to be reviewed by the community. Yeah. And if you're not pixel accurate on those labels, they're going to boot. <laughs> it's just going to, this might work. This is great reflection of the common neon sign. Okay, well, we'll start talking. Because it's small? Here. Yep. The bunch who doesn't know about 2x DPI. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, can signal decoding and trying to identify what they are with the uh, car. And it started, and the first thing is, like, can it read the can reader? And then once it says it's possible, then we can start it. Now we're checking if the words are open or closed. So we have to do each one 10 times to launch you know, each time to the state. So now we were both opening and closing car doors. Then we were checking the, the buckle sensor, uh, which only senses if the driver is buckled or not. Uh, so we figured out that the passenger seats doesn't care about them. Uh, then we That's a feature. <laughs> we don't want to disengage if the passenger removes their yeah, seat back. Um, then the uh, mine report zero. Highly concerning. The test's already finding bugs. Yeah. Uh, there was one that was, um, what is your current like viewership or state? So it was able to be neutral, reverse, um, not breaking was one of the states that showed up. Uh, then, oh yeah, park and yeah, that's us. What's out. mountain breaking? As you're going downhill, a Prius doesn't have the idea of downshifting, so you can do it. And so you can overcharge your battery. And so you can do engine braking as you're going down to say, mm -hmm. don't burn the engine. Then we tried out a whole bunch of different. Is that what B is? Yes. Yeah. 
Yo, I always wondered that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like drive, but slower. Yo, that's a great feature. Um, and then, yeah, we should try going forward, backwards, and reading the state off of that. For some reason, the cruise control um, states just all blended in, and I guess we need to figure out what's going on with that. But yeah, the idea is figuring out which one, if you're making like a fork or something like that, if all the variables are being mapped correctly, which ones are coming in or out. There's one for clutch press. There's no clutch in the previous, so we can take it there. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, we found out that after we captured, after all the drive data uploaded from the Eon, uh, if you play back in longer, it also does the same thing offline. So this could potentially be run on all the different cars that upload their data, um, just to check to see if all of it is in there. It's just nicer to be actually physically in the car so you can check things like whether or not all the doors Um, so that's what we work on. We also work on a different one where we were trying to say, given a completely unknown like EBC or a completely unknown state, could we calculate back um, what the signals are by pressing the button? And we got far enough to say, hey, we see the area where like the left hand signal triggers, but we didn't get far enough. Cool. Mm. Nice. Woo. Sweet. Who's next? I think we're next. I was also doing the rise engineering. Yeah, we started off as one group, and then we stopped. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hacks on the comma two and thirds. <laughs> Comma two thirds. Comma two thirds. <laughs> Yo, you want a comma two thirds? Build a freon. <laughs> How's YouTube's? Fifty-eight. Oh, that's pathetic. Is it? Go, go tell people? your friends. Come watch our channel. Oh, I'll I'll tweet. Maybe you know, Ooh, for people who didn't think that out. comma was actually gonna do this. We did sit. We did, oh, we add everyone on Discord. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. better. Okay. Okay, Try to okay. Do that? Yeah, can you do that? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we can turn off the neon, I guess. How many boots are left? Two, three. Three. Thank you, virtually, Chris. I think so too. Don't mind me just having a conversation, you know. Mm. Already linked it? Ugh, oh, amazing. Already linked it. Right, should I start? Tweet. So, I was also, like I said, uh, working on this reverse engineering of car signals. And uh, the idea was that um, right now, when you look at Cabana, it's quite difficult to make out which signals do what. Uh, and so, what we set out to do is like try to, to get an automatic uh, filtering of the signals and uh, Ultimately, to, to just uh, from from all the logs, also from a single log file of OpenPilot, be able to know which CAM ID is steering, acceleration, and braking. So we didn't get that far, uh, but so I'm going to explain basically what, the, <coughs> what we had to do. So we took the, the log and exported everything in a, in, a, in a CSV file, so that we had all the data 
uh, basically reference to this to the same time. And then, um, so, one, so this is basically this using this uh, error loader. And then, <coughs> what we saw is that once, so this is a, a table with all the data. And what we saw is that once you print that uh, in, a, in a plot, once you plot it, it's fairly easy to see that some signals uh, are just like noise or counters or things that are not actually physical by this. And then there are some signals that are actually like a complex theory or something like that. So I mean, just for just by displaying this, you will probably be able to see quite better uh, what uh, what could be something like a like a string angle acceleration or speed than like looking at the x values. Um, and this is, by the way, just uh, basically converting the whole message, the whole CAM data, and converting it to literature and plotting it. So Wait, all, all, all eight bytes. All the bytes, yeah. Yeah, so but what if what if it's in the least significant bytes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So of course, some of the messages here, but that don't, won't make sense. But even then, uh, for for the things like steering, you can usually get the whole the whole uh, message. Yeah, you get, you got lucky because it's in the first two bytes. It's a, it's a different one, so yeah, I don't know. It it, it did uh, work in, in the in the ones that we, we tried. So anyway, uh, after that, <coughs> the idea was okay. So now yeah. we see that can we actually uh, train a neural network to to differentiate between the two? So we got the file before and uh, split it in different, uh, in shorter. So basically, so we took this one and. Randomly selected uh, hand IDs and then took like snippets of a few seconds and uh, passed them onto a neural network. Um, it's like a very similar, a very simple three layer then network. Tried to do some convolutional but didn't get to it. And actually uh, tried to differentiate between uh, steering and non steering signals. And the accuracy, the test accuracy ended up being 89%, which I think is quite okay. Not for like generating the DVC, but at least in the UI for showing what could or could not be hmm. a steering signal. Uh, yeah, so just just to show you what it looks like, uh, this is so I can I can run this. For example, this randomly select like this this one in 30, which looks like this. So of course, if you run this, the model will tell you that this is probably uh, not a steering signal. Uh, if you run for example, 37. 37 is a is a steering signal. So let's look at that one. Okay, so this is the power steering back here, and then it's telling you that actually this is a 98% steering. How many uh, frames are you putting into the network? Uh, 700 frames. Cool. Um, yeah. So let's try another one. Let's do 23. So this, is a, this looks more similar to steering, but even then the model says that this is a not steering. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that we can still do, like train from different models, uh, change them the, 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 to convolutional or OSDM, and also do angle unwrapping, because much of the, the data here is the angle passing to zero and just jumping around. Uh, but yeah, I think it could be something that could be added to the UI and then you could uh, see much better whether which values can correspond to, to this acceleration theory in your review. Nice. Cool. Cool. All right, how are you doing, YouTube? How many we got? 130. Oh, 130. Are they complaining about the microphone? They were complaining about the microphone. Can they hear me when I talk? Yeah, you're very close. <laughs> You're also at twenty percent. So. Oh, my battery? No, but it lasts forever. It's oh, my that's phone true. Pro Max. Don't worry. Oh, I was worried because like the hundred percent on a normal phone. Yeah, exactly. An <laughs> iPhone ten dies so quickly. That's right. So, hi everybody. I'm Campbell. I uh, took a bus here from Berkeley. Um, I decided to uh, take on this Cabana challenge of auto fingerprinting 
um, and basically fixing up Cabana. Um, so basically, auto fingerprinting, uh, in the CAN data, there's information about the car, uh, and um, normally through Cabana, you need to uh, manually choose the BBC file that interprets all that CAN data. Uh, and so I built a feature in Cabana that can automatically detect um, the, the vehicle and can automatically apply the, um, the proper uh, BBC. Right now it's not automatically apply, applying it, but it's kind of giving smarter suggestions uh, than were previously available. Uh, and then I also went around and kind of talked to people that use Cabana uh, and figured out, you know, uh, what they liked about it, what they didn't, uh, and kind of made some, some UI changes. I added more data to the UI and kind of made it more modular. Uh, and also enabled um, uh, the ability to customize the repository that you're sourcing your DPC files from. Uh, and then just generally went around uh, and kind of reverse engineered the app and you know made it cleaner. Um, I'm planning on cleaning up the, the work that I did on this uh, and submitting a pull request. Um, and I'm also, you know, I've, I've gotten a feel for this app, so I kind of want to keep working on it. Um, and I'd love, you know, more feedback if anybody has any feature requests. Uh, it's, you know, it's complicated, but it's not super hard to work with. I uh, could, could definitely use a lot of improvement. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed, you know, talking to everybody that, that uses Cabana and, and kind of, uh, you know, fixing it up and making it better. And, 48 hours? Nice. Yeah, it was a cool, cool, uh, cool challenge. Um, and I also uh, kind of surfaced more information from uh, the CAN files that, that were previously available. So kind of, um, you know, went through the process of uh, interpreting this, this CAN data and displaying it on the front end for, uh, for the ability to, to uh, kind of manipulate it on Cabana. I, I wasn't able to get all of the CAN data converted into bytes so you could play around with it, but I kind of got some of the legwork in and, and had some of the, uh, the signals, like some of the live tracking data, um, some of the path planning data, um, and more of the car parameters uh, able to be accessed in Cabana. Uh, yeah. Cool. It was really cool. Cool. Yeah. See if this works. Oh, yes. Cool. Who's next? I, one more. Oh, okay. I still got to set up this computer. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. There's also a place to plug in the phone. You know what? I want to see just how long George's battery lasts <laughs> at this point. I was going to help him out, and then I figured. He's going to hook up a bicycle generator to it. Yeah. Like Hello, YouTubers. Welcome to the intermission. It takes people time to plug their stuff in. You know that we have to keep you entertained constantly. Right. Hopefully, my thumbna thumbnail was shocking. And you, know, you got to You ever seen the thumbnails on YouTube? The arms race of thumbnails? It's so important. It's so yeah. Important. You but you can't it. lie. There's some people who lie up. Yeah. Mr. Beast lies all the time. Yeah, but then people are so mad about the video. You know, it's a real yeah, delicate but it balance. Matter. They still watched it. PewDiePie made a video oh, once. Could everybody you. dislike this video? And it was the most disliked video on YouTube. Yep. Wow, look Sweet. at that charging. Actually, yeah, we have so much plugs here. I know. So much plugs. It's crazy. Wow. Keep talking, George. Got 150 people watching you. Got 150 people. Yo, if you guys are interested, um, we sold a lot of Comma 2s. Uh, we need people to come work here. That's why we did the hackathon. Uh, I'm a real honest person. Uh, comma AI slash jobs. Um, apply. Get a uh, phone call. Yeah, if you're a great software engineer. The interview process is very fun. I'll interview you myself. It's fun, I promise. Fun. 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 It's fun. It's fun. Everyone just 
Not it's chill, just it's fun. Not chill, but driving's chill if you buy a Comet 2, but don't buy a Comet 2. We sold too many of them. Yeah. Uh, now I'm done with that. I'm done with that riff. It's played out. Limits without the eye. Limits without the eye. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Do the screens not work when you unplug them and plug them back in? I think I'm going to have to reboot. Oh no! NVIDIA, fix your driver! If NVIDIA, if you're watching, fix your driver. Waymo, if you're watching, shut down. You'll never make money. <laughs> <laughs> Zooks, if you're watching, we are hiring. <laughs> Get out before it collapses. <laughs> we had a reach in from a big level five company today. Oh, sorry, level four. I think the presentation is gonna be down here. Oh, what? Yup. Yup. Just because the, the, the monitor is uh, not as big as that monitor, don't judge based on that. True. That's right. Computer, because the NVIDIA drivers are terrible. Don't unplug and replug your monitor. Don't regret it. Yeah, you will regret it. Okay. So. That system program problem detected started after I installed the NVIDIA drivers, by the way. <laughs> Look guys, manager runs on Ubuntu now. It's like an Eon, but it's Ubuntu. People are so quick to drop when the stream goes out. Whoa, we're down to 93 people. That's terrible. Yeah. 93. That's a lot. Stream has experienced <laughs> <planner. laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Let's see. What, was this going to work with the webcam? Yeah. Yo, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, man. And uh, it's yeah. actually, I wrote it in C++, it, plus plus, so you can actually. And it's in UI. Whoa, this yeah. is exciting. Does anyone have a picture of a road? Does it run the model? Yeah, does it run the model? You can show from uh, the other Actually, computer. I don't, I don't think it does, but... Mm. Open, uh, open that so on the other one. Oh! You get to see uh, you guys. Hi, Mom. Wait, just, <laughs> just run Model D. Yeah, it should work, right? Yeah, it should work, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, yeah and we got a pic we get a picture of the road up on that monitor? <laughs> if this works, that would be pretty exciting. If it doesn't work, well... Well, shoot. Yeah. Um, CD self-drive, uh, Model D. Model D. I wrote this code, so if it breaks, you know, okay. you know who's you know so, fault for this. Does anyone have a picture of a road? Oh, 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 well, let's see if it loads first. Oh, no, no, you know what the problem is? We got to run calibration D. Open up another window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the rain, by the way. It never rains in San Diego. Self drive. Yeah. Calibration Location D. Location D. Oh, okay. Uh, just that's good. And then dot slash calibration D. Wow. Yeah. That's be crazy. Right. Yo, fingers crossed. That's super combo. Wait, All is right. the frame rate right? <laughs> uh, I don't huh? think huh? it doesn't matter. Right? No, hang on. It's still, it's Wait, still loading. Why isn't the model running? Should be running, right? Do we need anything else? I don't know. I see the... the, the it's like right? trying to predict... Oh, maybe it's there. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, I don't think it's working. It's not working? Because isn't there... There doesn't seem to be much bugs. Yeah. No, uh, I don't know. Restart calibration day? Or restart... Yeah, Model D is not going to... Model D is not going to run the model unless... Oh, it's, yeah, it's um, that, oh. No, 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 but yeah, Model D yeah, should nice. run the model because how else does Super Combo work? No, it's like this oh, <laughs> I don't know. Control C Model D and try running it again. Maybe it'll work. Okay. Uh, model D? You didn't change UI at all, did you? No. 
Oh, no. So, wait. Yeah, Control-C model, model view, run it again. Model view's running through manager, so that's No, it's not. It's not? Right there. Yeah. Click on the, yeah, that window. Oh, yeah. Control-C. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, I need to start. Yeah, why didn't camera D restart? Yeah, okay, so... Wait, you're running camera D through man. No, uh, yeah, so... Okay. Oh, that thing lies and says so the car I, start. I, 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 I see. I have health through there. Oh, you have health through there. So that yeah. actually should start model D then. Yeah, no, but, but there's the, the fake driver data that I'm on. There's the fake driver data. So oh, 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 it worked for like three frames. <laughs> All right, well, I'm yeah, turning. <laughs> yeah. This is exciting. Who's going to be the first person to go out and put a YouTube video up driving with their Logitech webcam? The future is decentralized. All you need is a. <laughs> All you need is a webcam and a gaming computer and open source software to drive your car. Yep. And a panda, but and a panda. you know, don't tell them that one. You're yeah. Good. Oh, there, no, the, but there was the, uh, where? Is there yeah, there was, someone had an adapter that they were used. I don't know. For that no? MacBook, I don't know. Oh, yeah, there you go. No. Um, is, is the screen better or? Yeah, yeah, no. You can show it on a laptop. laptop. Yeah. yeah, let's do that. Are you sure you want to broadcast this? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So, hi, y'all. Uh, my name's Graham Arthur McKenzie. I'm super happy and proud to be here. I uh, appreciate you all giving me a chance. Um, so, I'm probably, or I mean, not probably, I'm definitely by a couple orders of magnitude, the least experienced person here. Um, <clears throat> so, at the very beginning of this event, George mentioned two reasons why we're here. One of them was uh, as a recruiting event to find machine learning talent. Clearly, I don't fall into that bucket yet. So, um, <laughs> the other one was to beta test some software. So, I was more focused on that aspect as a person who is maybe more savvy than some people, but is still just like trying to figure things, some of these things out. So. I guess I was representing that end of the user pool, perhaps. But in any case, uh, also George mentioned externalizing things. And so I decided to focus on that. Um, uh, where, uh, Joe mentioned um, wanting to see torque displayed, um, maybe in the Eon. But um, in any case, in the meanwhile, uh, I started working on um, showing torque, but not in the Eon, instead in the, in the UI interface. So. Um, I'm not sure how many of y'all worked on this aspect, but uh, there's the unlogger, which we start running, and then it starts spitting out data, and then we can run the UI module on top of that. So, hmm, let me just first demonstrate the UI as it was originally received by me. So, or as it currently exists on the repo. So we get the data running here off of um, a public, uh, Route. Public unlogger, thanks to Andy H2. Yes. So Andy you can H2. see it starts spitting out data. You come over here. And there. We run the UI. And the UI should pop up. There it does. So for those who have tested it, this is what the UI looks like. Um, there is an issue here, right off the bat, which is basically that the resolution of either the VM and or my Mac are making it such that the lower part of the UI is cut off. Um, I don't think I have, well that's fine. I don't think I have the capabilities necessarily to uh, change that. I, I tried to mess around with the resolution. I could not get the bottom part of the UI to show up. Um, but I was intending to add torque to this. Anyway, so that is the UI as it exists. And so I started making some changes on the route to um, getting torque to show up. Uh, so I'll just quickly go through these. I know these are very specific, short presentations. So the first thought I had was make it resizable. Um, I started digging around in the UI and also one of the UI libraries. And I was able to make it resizable, but that did not 
make it such that you could scroll things. So I, moved <laughs> I moved on to the next thing, which is that, okay, so I have a screenshot here of the UI where you can see. That UI is five years old now. Oh yeah. I wrote that during the smoke and weed era of comedy. Hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why I was able to grok it so well. <laughs> All right, so here's a screenshot I made of the next part, which is that I started messing around with the elements and um, I appreciate very parsimonious commenting. I think that that's in, uh, in, uh, under best circumstances indicative of good coding. And so, so that was the case here. So I had to start manipulating things to see what was what. So first thing I found is that this text was the thing that was off screen. So I changed the orientation to be zero, zero so that I could see the text. Um, but then I think the it looks better on the picture. It looks like the Tesla ones. I agree. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things I realized. So Thanks, Tesla. <laughs> so yeah, so this text, which um, is not visible on the UI with my current setup, is now visible. And I agree with George. It does look better with the picture as the background. Um, so but then I noticed there's this new line break between those two sets of data. So I asked Greg, is there a reason for that? Because you can see, actually, apparently, one of the ways in the smoking weed era to show a new line break is to just do none. And that added the line break. So, but Clearly, that wasn't added for no reason, so I asked Greg, uh, uh, Greg what the reason was. He wasn't quite sure. Um, but he guessed that there is some sort of categorical separation there. So in an attempt to retain that category separation, categorical separation without, um, without having a new line there, because it was taking up more space, I just removed the new line and then changed this lower font to orange. Had to find out how to do all that and was successful. I'm not, I'm, there's going to be sort of a reveal at the end or whatever. I want to show you all the changes I made. Anyway. Give us the reveal in one minute. Okay, okay. Okay. Really quickly. Um, blah, blah, blah. Remove the new line. Oh, okay. Other, other change I did was there was, a, there was a video that shows the trajectories on top of the uh, in, in area of interest. And I wanted to put that up here because there's a lot of wasted space just from a usability perspective. There's a lot of wasted space going on up here. And basically anything outside of the bounding box, we don't really care about. So from a visual perspective, it's better just to have it in there. So I kept this text. Oh, I moved it over here. I kept it up here. Put the, put the um, other box up here to do video and video, um, which is a shout out to Viv. <laughs> and then... Uh, Thank you. Just kidding. Oh. And then um, I started mas massaging text, moving things around, massage the, the, and then the plot was out of the way, so I started massaging plot spacing. And anyway... Let's see what we got. Here it is. <laughs> Here's my version. Um, yeah, I think this data is still running. Okay, yeah, yeah, still running. Yeah. And here is my UI. Moment of truth. Ooh. So, so yeah, so now we have the video in video. So it's, we, we're taking advantage of the wasted space above. Also, it's aligned with the image below in order to basically have a, a little bit easier visual acuity. This is still um, taking advantage of being on top of the background. And now, because the default setting on the text for enabled and break light is black, we can actually see you know, when it's not being engaged effectively. Also, I moved this map up so we can make sure and see the car. And the reason why this text is all right to overlap is because the farther we, we get away from the front of the car, the less um, you know, crucial that data is effectively. So it doesn't really impinge on the uh, on the, uh, you, uh, whatever, the debugging aspect of which is what we're using this for. And then uh, I got the plot, I, you know, matplotlib, as we all know, is not easy to use, but I was able to massage these into space so that we're still seeing the data. And the last thing that I was working on but wasn't able to do was uh, get these labels to match the color of the graph line. That would seem to be most, again, most effective. That makes a lot more sense than the little parentheses that we have. Uh -huh. Oh, is that, I was wondering what those were. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the Y is parentheses. Oh. Y, and, you know, again, yeah, yeah. The, the UI has not been shown much love. Okay, so now the very last little, that was, that was, that's mostly what I did. And then the very last little thing is uh, that, uh, as we can see here, this, this system is based off Pygame. Mm -hmm. And Pygame works quite well. But here's the thing, Pygame, quite understandably has self-promotion needs. And so as you can see, every time we invoke the UI, Pygame gets their little advertisement in there. Hello is, from the Pygame community. Yeah, which is, oh, well, maybe. <laughs> okay, well, so then I didn't like that. I don't want, I mean, no offense to Pygame, we love them and, and all that, but I just personally didn't want to see that. So I first got rid of it. <laughs> and then I thought, no, but we still want a prompt. So I added a comma prompt. 
<laughs> Yo! Nice. Oh, so the whip with the uh, URL. All right, that was it. Nice job. Nice. Heck yeah. All right, who's next? Everyone who wanted to present, present. Did you want to present? No. Anyone else? Who's next? No? All right, I said we were going to shout it out, but we're not really going to. Oh, we got one nice. more. All right. We're actually going to all go in the back comm employees after this and decide who wins the prizes. Oof, intense. We can't be bribed. Yeah. I'll be sure. But YouTube, we'll live stream it YouTube though. can come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube can come. <laughs> I'll be short. Uh, I don't have HDMI. What's your name? Winston. My name's Winston. Hi, people. Hi, YouTube. Hi, Mom. Um, <laughs> so it seemed like everybody was trying uh, really hard, and that's great and all, but one of the purposes of this was to kind of decentralize and make it really easy for anybody to get into this. Um, so I thought, what's the easiest way to do that? Let's build a dashboard. People love dashboards. I don't know why. Um, and so basically, what I did was I went to the comma 2019 2K19 um, and flipped around the process readers to a non-process readers. Uh, it's running currently on a uh, branch in my GitHub uh, hackathon. If you want to go take it, uh, do whatever you want with it. Uh, but it's running on QPy, so be aware of that um, instead of NumPy. Basically, we're just converting all of everything. Uh, this one, it should be. What is that? Uh, yeah, so we're downloading the entire 22K19 uh, data set, right? And then we go and we extract all the values, which was kind of hard to do, um, but that's good. So I just implemented a whole bunch of for loops. Uh, and then I brought it in and I made a dashboard, which doesn't really work, but it should eventually. Uh, we have some display issues around San Jose for some reason. And so you just go down here, this is running off uh, iPod widgets, uh, Blazing SQL, um, and a few other simple technologies. Um, and you should be able to just put a space here. And we'll get the full data frame there with the query. Uh, and then we can do this coordinate map, which is mapping mm -hmm. out the uh, route that was taken. Um, I like this one. I think we can do better, and I think we can scale it. Um, and then the speed versus bearing, just to show what's kind of possible. and. This is the geo map to show that a map was supposed to be there, but I couldn't get it to display. That's all. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Can you tell people the GitHub they're asking? Uh, I will. You will. You will. will. Cool. Okay. Um, so remember how I said YouTube was going to come in the back for the judgment session? They're not. Oh. Sorry, YouTube. It was nice having nice you. Nice having you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining the Comment on Hackathon and Spirit. Come to the next one IRL. <gasps> Bye, Bye, YouTube.